Hi guys, Corey Schumann here, certified personal trainer, certified online coach, mom of two little boys. Uh, wear a lot of hats. <laughs> so today I want to talk to you about part two of a video I did last week. So last week I did some bro science myths debunked, um, kind of debunked those common beliefs that have been passed from bro to bro, right, in the fitness industry. Um, one bro passes it to another. And then before you know it, everybody takes it as fact. So today I got a lot of feedback and that you guys wanted some more of that. So today I'm going to jump into part two. So number five, all right, <laughs> you've got to drink a protein shake immediately after your workout to hit that anabolic window, right? That is so common, guys, and this is just silly. But unfortunately, it sounds just scientific enough that most people believe it. Um, it sounds good, right? Like hit that anabolic window, right? You gotta get it in there. But really, um, the truth is that yes, after a weightlifting session, your muscles are torn, that's sort of the point, right? You tear them down so that they'll build back stronger. That's the whole point, the whole purpose of lifting weights. Um, and that requires protein, it requires amino acids, which are the building blocks of protein to build back those muscles to keep them strong. But, and they're, they're essential really for, for repairing the damage that you do. Um, but <laughs> there are most scientists out there, actually, I, I should say many, maybe not most, many scientists out there really don't even believe the anabolic window exists, okay? Yes, you're likely to be in an anabolic state after an intense weightlifting session, um, so, and, which is a good time to grow muscle, excuse me, a good time to repair muscle, et cetera. But the, the idea of a window being open and then shut, most, many scientists are thinking that's not even the case. The ones that do think that probably is, they universally agree that the time is more like six hours than 30 minutes okay so in other words like you got time you don't need to be slamming a protein shake as you're doing your last set of squats right like it's not necessary chill you got time all right the next one eating five to six small meals a day is the best way to increase your metabolism this is so common I can't even tell you like this is so many people believe this and it's just not true. On the surface, it makes sense. I mean, honestly, like I can see why people would think this is true. You eat a bunch of small meals throughout the day and it keeps your metabolism firing, right? To full capacity, right? Um, but no, it is not true. <laughs> this is false, guys. There have been tons of studies that have shown, that have completely debunked this, this theory. Um, really, it doesn't matter. They've shown that it doesn't matter if you're eating one huge meal or three you know, medium ones or five small ones. You can eat eight small. It doesn't matter if you're eating every hour, every two hours, every six hours. It doesn't matter what it comes down to. And every study is showing the same result what it comes down to is how many macros and how many calories you're eating in a 24-hour period so within one day or within 24 hours how much are you consuming and of what that's what makes a difference it doesn't have any have anything to do with small meals blah 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 so all those little you know bags that are that they're selling to keep your multiple meals cool you can scratch it you don't need to do that unless you just like it and then you know go go with it <laughs> all right next one to maximize fat burning, you need to work out in the fat burning zone. Guys, this myth, complete myth, is, is based on a complete misrepresentation of where the, the body gets energy from um, during exercise. So the body has two sources of energy it can pull from during exercise, glycogen and fat. And so glycogen is just like your carbs, your sugar, and then fat stores. And it really kind of tends to, it depends on what you're doing, but it tends to want to pull from fat when you're at a low intensity. So if you're, you know, you're going for a walk or maybe a really easy hike, or you're doing some Pilates or some yoga or maybe not yoga, cause I've done some yoga and been like sweating. So maybe that's not it, but you know what I mean? Like a really low intensity exercise, your body tends to want, it tends to prefer the fat stores. Um, but, but, and this is a huge, but at lower intensities, the body doesn't burn more fat. It just burns more fat than glycogen. It burns more fat than carbs. So, and there have been countless studies that show that high intensity workouts, that the, the more intense workouts actually burn calories for several hours after. And when we're talking about HIIT training, so that, that high intensity interval training, when it's done right, you can even burn calories for up to 36 hours afterwards, which is huge. So really what it comes down to, the fat burning zone, yes, you burn a greater percentage of fat in the moment, but far less calories overall. 
So again, this one, just put that to bed, guys. Um, all right, the next one. Cutting calories and doing lots and lots of cardio is the best way to get skinny. <laughs> guys, this is such a common, common mindset that people come to me with. Um, so many women, and yes, ladies, I'm talking to you mostly because I, I really don't have very many men that come to me with this mindset. But so many women think that eating tiny, tiny bits of food and doing tons and tons of cardio is the best, like endless cardio, right? Is the best way, it's the key to being skinny. Ladies, you gotta, you gotta stop this. Honestly, treadmill manufacturers are making a killing, doesn't make it true. It's not that cutting calories and, and, and doing endless cardio won't eventually lead to weight loss and to fat loss. It, it will, it's, you know, at that rate, it can't help. But the problem is, it is extremely difficult to burn only fat. That, that's a problem. You'll most likely, at some point, you will start burning muscle. And, and that is a problem because then that leads you to being skinny fat. And if you don't know what that is, just Google it. It just means you're very, very thin, like you don't have much fat, but there's nothing else. You're very soft, just squishy all over, soft, because there's no muscle. Um, and so that's definitely not what you want if you're trying to sculpt your body, if you're trying to get those defined lines, if you really want that look, that's, this is not the way to get it, guys. Um, skinny is not the same as lean, okay? If you wanna be lean and you wanna have some muscle on you, you gotta lift weights and you gotta put down so much cardio and you gotta start eating a little bit more. All right, number one this is the last one. This is probably, this by far, the one that I get like super irritated about because everybody seems to think it's true. If you're lifting weights, you need to consume about two grams of protein per pound of body weight or some other version of this, okay, two and a half grams per pound, per pound, 1.8 grams per pound, somewhere around there, that, that area, the most common I hear is two, two grams per pound. So if I weigh 150 pounds, I need to be consuming 300 grams of protein in a single day because I'm lifting weights. Guys, this is insane. This is flat out ludicrous. And, and first of all, there's zero evidence to back it up. There's not a single study, and I have looked, I have searched, and I have looked, and I have beyond what you would even imagine, I have really tried to find something to back this up. There's nothing. Guys, there's no studies that show that this is true in any way. Um, and in fact, tons of studies show that you shut it down completely. This is somehow still the probably the number one bro science myth out there in the fitness industry. It's crazy. Um, listen, guys, as I mentioned earlier, Protein uh, is important when you're lifting weights. You're tearing down those muscles, you know, you're tearing those muscle fibers, that's what you get sore, right? And then you need to build those back and they need to have something to build back, which is those amino acids. Now, amino acids come from protein, okay? They're the building blocks of protein. So yes, you do need protein. It is critical for building muscle. It requires protein. However, guys, this does not mean that the more that you eat, the bigger or faster or stronger you're gonna be. There's a cap, okay? In fact, a double blind study that was with um, novice bodybuilders, excuse me, so beginner bodybuilders, they were in the weight room, they're really trying to put on size, they're hitting the gym super hard, they're watching what they eat. They did like a six month trial and each group had different amounts of protein, you know, um, some low, some, you know, low to medium, some moderate. I think there were five different groups, moderate to high and then high. And so they, they determined which one, you know, built the muscle the fastest, et cetera, et cetera. Now they did say that between the real, the very low end and the moderate, the, the medium to moderate, um, there was a difference there. But they found out that honestly, <laughs> they were determining how much protein consumed would make a difference. They found that there was no, like zero recorded benefit for those consuming more than 0 0.68 grams per pound. Guys, that is much different than two grams a pound, okay? That's 0 0.7 to two, that's way different, okay? We're talking like to a person about 150 pounds, you're looking at, I would have to do the calculations to be, to be exact, but like 105 grams of protein versus 300. There's no benefit. Now, if you wanna eat more, okay, cool, that's, that's your choice. If you want to have the, you know, cause protein is more, um, it's more satiating in your in your stomach and your body. You feel hungry, or excuse me, you feel full for longer. It's it's good for a lot of things. So if you want to do a high protein diet, that's your choice. But understand that it is not going to make a single bit of difference in how fast you grow muscle or how much muscle you grow. It doesn't make a difference. So if you want to just keep it at the the level that you need, 0.7 per pound, and that's it. Much less much much less than two. <laughs> All right, guys. So there you have it. More bro science myths debunked. Hopefully this will help to clear things up.
so that you can get the most out of your workout and you can be efficient in your in your you know your fitness journey. Um, guys, I have been loving the feedback. You guys have sent me tons of feedback with some ideas, uh, things that you'd like to hear me talk about. If you have anything else, please don't hesitate to contact me and let me know um, so I can get those videos up for you guys. As always, please like and share this video so that other people people can see it and I will see you next time. Bye.